bringing drag performers together with little kids is kind of a perfect relationship. There are people a whose perfect gender... perfect relationship, yeah, if you want to groom them into the next letter of your alphabet mafia, which is P for pedophile, then it is. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, The Daily Wire just uploaded a video called I Became Transgender. Here's why I regret it. Let's have a look. I lived eight years as Laura Jensen until I woke up and realized that it was totally insane to live this out. The, the first time that it happened in the 50s was Christine Jorgensen but Jenner took it to the next level. And, and then 2015, it began to explode. Are you a woman? Um, yes, for all intents and purposes, I am a woman. My brain is much more female than it is male. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the courageous, the stunning, Caitlyn Jenner. So ruining brave. an entire generation of children, I find, even hearing about it and reading about it, so repugnant and so destructive to children. Yeah, man. Trans members of this family all love each other so proudly and they all... Bringing drag performers together with little kids is kind of a perfect relationship. There are people a whose perfect gender... perfect relationship, yeah, if you want to groom them into the next letter of your alphabet mafia, which is P for pedophile, then it is. Might be a little bit of both, or might even be neither. And it's time... Wow, this is pure evil. As you can see, they're indoctrinating children on the most basic fundamentals of biology and this creation. If you can convince people as a whole, as a society, that the two genders do not exist, you can convince them of anything. This is about total control and this is why they deconstruct the fundamentals of life. Might even be neither. Wow. And it's time that this stuff needs to end. We need men and women to step That's up right. and say, stop this nonsense. I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. You know, my upbringing was pretty much a typical California upbringing um, in, in Los Angeles in the early 40s. It wasn't really anything remarkable. At least not until uh, my dad began to take me over and drop me off at my grandma's house. Grandma was a seamstress and made dresses. And I became very curious about her work. And my curiosity led to her making me a purple chiffon dress that she made just to fit my perfect little four-year-old body. You know, at first it felt- What an evil woman. Really exciting to have somebody telling me how wonderful and cute I was. But what I didn't realize was happening is the second grandma began to tell me how cute I looked in that purple dress, what she was really saying was that there was something radically wrong with the little boy that I really was. That is exactly right. And this is what you see with single mothers nowadays as well. There is news headline after news headline of kids transitioning, three, four, five year olds transitioning, boys that want to become women. Excuse me, but are women, of course, little boys that try to cut off their own penis because their mother is catering to them. This can only happen in a society where men have been weakened and absolutely demoralized, where women have taken over. The media is of course pushing the same narrative because they want to see a world destroyed. This is about total destruction, about the total destruction of everything that is good. The media is promoting how good it is to be an empowered woman. And the little boys nowadays get brainwashed into believing the only way to be is by being a woman. The worst thing to be nowadays is of course a white male. This is a war against men. And so that begins this sort of creepy kind of psychological and emotional destruction that starts yeah. with inside a young boy, four years old, who doesn't know what the consequences are going to be about putting on a dress at four years old. And That's keeping right. it a secret from my parents for nearly two years until I became so accustomed to wearing that purple dress that I decided to take the dress home so that I could 
put it on when my parents weren't watching or when I was alone and I could sort of listen and hear those affirmations. I became sort of addicted to the affirmations. And Absolutely sickening. I even know mothers that did that to their sons. They would put on dresses and would tell them how much they would like to have a daughter. Absolutely sickening. Hearing her say how cute I was. So I had the purple dress at home, but my mom found it. Found it in my bottom dresser drawer. And she said, well, where did you get this dress? And I said, well, grandma made it. And that just blew the house up. My dad was upset. My mom was upset. It was supposed to be a secret. I broke the secret. And as a result of that, I could not go back to grandma's house without my mom or dad being with me. Dad didn't know what to do. His mother-in-law had just been cross-dressing his young boy. He was so angry. Wow at my grandmother that he took his anger out in his discipline on me and he started hitting me with a hardwood floor plank uh, when I would do something wrong. Sometimes it, he was just being way too critical, but it was that what was built up in him because of what happened to me. He did not know what to do. If you can imagine in 1946, 47, there's no information about kids wearing dresses but the next part of the equation... Of course, the father didn't know how to react in this situation, just as the guy said. However, what happened here is that he took the anger of his own mother and projected it onto him. With this, he became traumatized, felt unloved, started identifying with the good emotion that grandma gave him and started identifying as a woman, started hating his own father for beating him. Was his adopted brother, Uncle Fred, heard about me wearing the purple dress, and Uncle Fred decided that I was fair game to be sexually abused. Uncle Fred was Damn. not playing with a full deck of cards, and he'd get a, drinking a little bit, and he would come looking for me, and he would molest me. The emotional and psychological issues that I had from Grandma affirming me, I didn't really realize the consequence of those for many years. The hardwood floor plank obviously was very devastating. And then the sexual abuse was sort of the cherry on top of the, the cake. Yeah. I was a broken child before I was 10 years old. You know, I, I decided- I really love how introspective this man is and how he can really see what has happened. Many people can't dissect their own psychology and get stuck in their trauma and live it out their whole life. This man saw it and snapped out of it. I really salute him, this is beautiful. Maybe I should have been a girl not realizing that, that what I was trying to do was escape the abuse, not actually change who I was. But it yes. resulted in me going through this process for many years of cross-dressing, going out in public as a female. And so I, I went through this with, even in my first marriage, I had two children. I was an executive for uh, wow. American Honda Motor Company. I worked on the Apollo space missions as an associate design engineer, but that purple dress, the hardwood floor plank and the sexual abuse was about to take everything away. Then the next right. critical step was struggling with my identity. I went to a gender specialist in San Francisco who promptly identified me with gender dysphoria or gender identity disorder and promptly told me that I needed hormones and surgery. That was the treatment. It is an absolute waste of time to go to such specialists, gender specialists, psychologists, what have you. You have to face your own demons and let God do the work. This is the only way. I know on this channel I have a few atheists that will tell me, uh, can you please stop talking about God? Deal with it or don't watch the video. Very, very simple. Those demons, you have to face them and let God do the work because those spiritual entities are way too strong for you. They enter the human body when it is weakened, psychologically destroyed, physically destroyed. This is when they enter. Without God, you're seeking men, so-called specialists, to actually take care of spiritual problems. It is an absolute impossibility. He was prescribing to help me end the cycle of distress I was having about my gender because of what happened to me as a young child. It is essentially the epitome of Western medicine with addressing the symptoms and not the root cause. To his name wow. is Dr. Paul Walker. Dr. Paul Walker was a homosexual transgender activist. He felt his yeah. job go figure to do like they're doing today is to introduce people to hormones and surgery 
as a process of treatment. Now keep in wow. mind, Dr. Paul Walker was not just your average therapist. Dr. Paul Walker was the author, the primary chairperson and author of the Harry Benjamin International Standards of Care. The very same standards of care that's being used today that's called WPATH standards of care. His agenda was pushing transgenderism, pushing surgery, and pushing hormones Sick. recklessly and really damaging someone's life like mine. Oh, wow. I had kind of um, a devastating um, run of events. When I was struggling with alcoholism and drug addiction, uh, I went into a treatment facility as Laura Jensen and came out the other side and I went through a two and a half or three hour therapy session with my psychologist. And during that day, I went through all of the things that had happened, the sexual abuse, the emotional abuse, the, the, the wrong idea about going through this procedure, all the things I'd done wrong, the destruction I did to my children and my ex-wife. And I writ wrote everything down after speaking about these issues and he put a match to those yellow line paper and, and in the parking lot and those papers began to burn and the, the wind gently picked up the flame and, and the papers were burned up and it was sort of that cathartic moment where you realized, okay, all of that stuff now is lifted off of my shoulders. And he said, let's go back into my office and let's pray. Well, I'll be honest with you, this guy prays a lot and he nice. prays for a long time. And I did not want to go back in and pray with this guy because I figured I'd be there for like an hour praying. And as he prayed, um, I kept hearing him and I kept thinking, is he going to end? And then there was a point in time when I couldn't hear him praying anymore. And miraculously, what I saw at that moment that I couldn't hear his voice was I saw the Lord Jesus Christ actually descending toward me with his arms stretched out. And Beautiful, I looked, man in front of me and I saw that he was reaching toward a little baby and I looked at the baby and I go that baby is me the wow. Lord is coming to claim me and he turned to me and said your life will be safe with me forever <laughs> and the Lord disappeared I realized that that oh, very wow man this is gonna move me to tears this is a powerful video I didn't expect this at all but it affirms what I just said only God can help you in this situation and even the so-called psychologist realized that that without prayer he couldn't do anything and even the psychologist the so-called expert realized without prayer he cannot do anything this is an absolute beautiful testimony for God the Lord came to redeem and restore my life so that I will serve him every day after that date. I wanted wow. to restore my life, bring myself back to reality. So faith played the pivotal role yes, in me being Amen. here today. 35 years sober, uh, married 24 years, and I detransitioned over 30 years ago. Thank the Lord I've been very successful in providing help to many people. I haven't been able to help everybody, but I've been able to help a lot of people and I'm very grateful for that. And I'm gonna to continue to speak out. I'm gonna to continue to work. I'm gonna to continue to try to help people who have no other place to turn. And so I started a website called sexchangeregret.com. And I work nice. every single day with either a parent, a father, uh, a transgender who has regret like I did. Uh, I work with psychologists, I work with Man. college professors, I work with doctors, I work with lawyers. I am working to prevent people from going through this totally unnecessary, insane surgical procedure. And that's why I'm so passionate about trying to raise my voice and give people the opportunity to go, wait a minute, maybe this isn't right for me. And I'm gonna continue doing it until the Lord comes and uh, takes me home. And uh, that's my mission, is to stop people from unnecessary surgery and stop the advocates from lying to people about them being able to change their gender. Right on, man. More power to you. It's absolutely beautiful. God bless. All right, guys, and this is the video. I think I've never been so silent in my reaction videos. Usually I stop the video every couple of seconds or so, but this was an absolutely beautiful display of what the Lord can do for you, of how great God is and that he can turn around 
everything. Without God, we have nothing in our life. And without God, we cannot do anything by ourselves. You see that we are all traumatized to some extent. Not everybody like him, thank God. We all have our own battles, some more, some less. But the point of the story is that we all have some level of traumatization that happened in our childhood. And this defines us then for the longest time of our life until we return to God and let him fight our battles. Otherwise, we always stay the traumatized child, just as him. He stayed this little traumatized child that was wearing the dress his whole adult life. And no matter what he did, no matter the job, no matter the marriage, no matter the children, nothing could change it until he let God back into his heart and let God take care of it. This is absolutely mesmerizing, absolutely beautiful. When I saw the title of this video, admittedly, I thought it's going to be a funny video. I thought we're going to have a laugh, but this was absolutely unexpected. It was the exact opposite of what I expected. It was an absolute beautiful display, yet again, of God. All glory to God. May he bless this man and bless you guys too. If you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do do so. If you want to support this channel, check out the links in the description box below. And as always, yet again, may God bless you all guys. Much love and peace.